I'm done. This is Hudson Vintage. This week we are doing vintage designer costume jewelry from the 80s and 90s. And I just saw a video that Doris did at The Way We Wore and I was really inspired. She showed a picture of Princess Diana wearing a Butler and Wilson snake pin and I actually have the pin and she reminded me that I have that pin when she showed the picture of Princess Diana and I thought it would be really fun to show it to you and I pulled some of the other vintage high-end designer costume jewelry to show you. I have eight necklaces, eight earrings, three pins, and one bracelet. So it's gonna be a quick one, but it's all the high-end designer. I know usually I show you the hidden gems. I'll show you something from sort of every tier, but this time there is pretty much maybe one mid-range and then everything else is high-end. So it's gonna be really fun and really quick. And I will start with this. This is the uh, only kind of non-high-end designer and I figured I could sneak it in because I'm wearing it. I'm not actually showing it. It's one of my favorite pieces to wear in the summer and I'm a little homesick right now. It's New York and it's the 1980s. I think it's Avon or Sour Coventry or Premier, one of those. And I love it and I just thought I'd wear it for fun in the spirit of the theme today. And we will start with the pin, the aforementioned pin. And actually this, this is a lipstick that if you're interested in helping me out, I got sent this lipstick, I didn't choose it. And it's called Smoking on Screen and I'm terrible at red lipstick. So I thought I would try it at the end of the video and you could let me know if I should keep it or not. I just absolutely love the packaging, the case, the lipstick case is so beautiful that I want it to work. <laughs> but in the meantime, back to the jewelry. So look at the size of this pin. There, that's what it looks like. It's huge. And I wish I wasn't wearing my kimono now. Uh, it's just so hot. And I know you've seen other bloggers talk about how hot it is and only wearing their dressing gowns. And I thought I would never be that person, except you can't turn on air conditioning when you are shooting a video because it gets into the mic. So this is where we are. So anyway, that's the Butler and Wilson and it's high-end 80s, valuable 80s, 90s. Really cool, that 80s cool factor. And next I will show you the only sort of mid-range piece. It is high-end designer, but it was in collaboration with Avon. And it was before they really did, you know, that high-low collaboration that became you know, the democratization of fashion later on. So it was pre that and it was sort of just licensing, um, but he did a really good job and it was, you know, really well made. It's poured glass. This is it. It's in the spirit of Gripois. And this is valuable even though it is um, Avon. It's Kenneth J. Lane for Avon and the mark is right there and it's fabulous and this is 1980s don't you love that and that is something to be on the lookout for or if you have it now you know what it is um, i wouldn't sell it if i were you they're only going to get more valuable over time they're wonderful this is one of my favorites les bernard is a high-end designer from the 1980s actually it might have been the late 70s, but very also the height of Les Bernard was the 1980s. And I knew one of the designers for Les Bernard and she brought me some of her samples. I don't remember if this came from her, but I love this so much. This is a scarab. It has that gold plating. There's a signature. It's an excellent curb chain. Beautiful. This is special. This was made by an artist. This is a man named Michael Michaud. He's still making things, but the, they're less done by his hand now, I believe, and they might be more factory produced the later ones, sort of like what happened with Robert Lee Morris. Robert Lee Morris has become more licensed, and I have some early pieces that he did in the 1980s uh, for Donna Karen in some other videos, and I'll put a link to at least one of them right up here. But this is early Michael Michaud. This, I believe, was called the River Rock Necklace, and this is done with semi-precious and uh, cold-painted brass 
and glass. And he was a um, very high-end designer in the 1980s, more boutique or artist, less, you know, department store, uh, you know, uh, European designer kind of name, but uh, absolutely beautiful. I have the earrings to this somewhere too. So that's Michael Michaud. Then we have this wonderful thing. This is 1980s Monet. This is one of their top, top ones to find if you ever find one. Uh, it's like the sea creature. They made this in silver and gold. I had a silver one once and I sold it and I wish I didn't. It's incredibly great. And I will show you the signature. There's the mark there. So some, right, oops, right there. So some 1980s Monet is sort of like the A-line. They had like the A-line, the B-line, the C-line. And then this is the top line and this is a real treasure if you find one very high end very cool you could see why it is really great 1980s you know once again will only increase in value and then we have you know what 80s collection would be complete without the chanel chiclet but i put it with the swarovski and again these swarovski strands i'll show you that one first these are also more rare depending on what you find. This one has a crystal and enameling in the shape of a heart. So the most common ones are just the regular round faceted crystals that you see here. And they came in multicolors or they came in solid colors. You could find black, you could find clear, you could find aurora. But anytime you veered away from that, these were also made with different stations and the enamels are the most hard to find so i thought it would be fun to show it to you with the you know very kind of typical this is the chanel chiclet necklace and um, i actually wear these together like this because i like the way the red enameling looks with it but if you ever see the shore off skate first of all the thing to note is if you see them in the shapes other than this they also made baguettes in squares and uh, different shapes and uh, I think mostly baguettes in squares and maybe some that had multiple shapes. So if you see those, those are the most collectible and the best to find and the best to keep. And then um, they also made them with different stations like rope stations and you know baby pearl studded or things like that this one's enamel this is the only one i've ever seen with enameling and it has the heart and i'll always have this and i have more of these if you'd like to see them i have an ab and baguette set that is exquisite um, and then this is the chiclet and that's the recognizable chanel gold and That's what that looks like, gorgeous. And then finally, I have one more necklace and I don't know what it is. Well, I do know what it is. I don't know who made it anymore. This is um, like a museum gift store gallery kind of piece. And it's Memphis, obviously, the Memphis era. This is Sterling and it's incredibly cool. This is just, the height of 1980s art gallery. It's like sculpture to wear. And if you find anything like this, it counts also as art. Oh, and I almost forgot the Asca de Laurenta. Duh, that's the one thing also that Doris mentioned in the Way We Wore video is that Oscar de la Renta was this high-end thing. She made mention of that. The amazing thing about Oscar de la Renta is that they were the last to close the Rhode Island factory. There was, an, by the, the last factory standing made Oscar de la Renta and I think also Yves Saint Laurent in Rhode Island before everything went overseas. And so this is from that last, this necklace actually is from that last group. And I still have the tags. This is the earrings and then that is the hang tag. And it's just handwritten $60 because it came from the showroom. So that was the showroom price in like 1986 or whenever it was, 88. And then I have 
this one here for the necklace, and this one was 150. So these were very high end back in the day, and they still are. If you could feel this, and um, you know, it's beautiful. It's definitely beautiful. Let me get it on the neck for you. There. Isn't that great? Um, yes. This is good. This is good high end vintage costume jewelry, so well made. And I'm looking at the backs here and I'm, you know, it's so funny. I've seen this before, you know, okay. So the trials of a vintage jewelry addict or collector or whatever you want to call it. This here, this finding, I've seen this and I am always looking at it going, what is that? I know what it is. Like I've seen it in other pieces, you know, maybe in a state sale or whatever. I've come across this every now and then. And I always am like, what is it? I know, I know what it is. And I can't remember. It's Oscar de la Renta. Now we know if I see this again, if you see this again, that brushed gold, this is indicative of Oscar de la Renta. Oh, and the eighties in general did a lot of that brushed gold. So it is a way to determine the era for sure. The eighties brushed gold thing was huge. Okay. And then the other thing that she mentioned, was one to the Ritz. This is fabulous. This is on its original card. This was their couture line, you know, their one ofs. And it said the spider pin. There's the card. It said the spider pin. And look at it. This is also a pendant. I believe I had the earrings to this and for some reason I didn't follow my own rule and sold the matching earrings. Why I would do that, I don't know. It must have been someone who just really, really wanted it. Look, look at how beautiful they are. And you know, she didn't show you the backs. I'm going to show you the backs. There's the pendant. That's what the backs looks like. And this is all movable. And then there's the chain, the rhinestone chain that makes the pin. This is 1980s extreme, uh, it's extremely indicative of that over the top extra kind of 1980s high end maximalist costume designer jewelry. And that is my lunch at the Ritz. So the next thing is actual Kenneth J. Lane, um, made in the 80s, not for Avon, super high end. This is a cabochon and large baguette pin. I believe there is pictures on my Instagram of this on a faux fur white Russian hat that I wear. Um, look at it. It's really exquisite. These were so well made. Kenneth J. Lane is tricky for collectors because he does reissue things that he's made in the past. Um, so things may never really be retired, but there are some things, you know, are just never going to get made again because they would just be too expensive to make today. And I believe that this is one of those pieces because of the pear shaped cabochons. It just wouldn't be the same if they tried. And so I don't know if they would try, but anyway, you can check my Instagram for those pictures. I am Hudson vintage on IG and Facebook and Patreon, and there's links in the description box. And I also have an Amazon shop. So anything mentioned, you can check in the description box for any links that I recommend how to take care of jewelry, reading materials, um, my favorite staples. And the Patreon is great for you if you're just starting out or if you're a professional, there's four different pairs, uh, there's four different tiers and it's definitely worth it to just check on the Patreon and see what that's about. And that link is also in the description box below. Okay, so these beautiful scarabs are also Kenneth J. Lane in that brush gold. I love the size of these. And these were high-end designer for the time. We cannot forget Christian Dior very important designer from the 1980s. These are my favorite Christian Dior earrings. I have two pairs of these. If you'd like one, let me know. I am also getting the website finally together. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And those are Christian Dior 
and they're signed right there. And then the next thing is kind of an under the radar designer, high-end designer. They used, I mentioned them before in other videos, and I will also find that and put the card up here. Um, it's Panetta, and Panetta did, I don't know if you'd really call it costume. I mean, they used a lot of um, sterling with gold over it, and some of my favorite earrings that I'm about to show you, I have three pairs, <laughs> and they're all so beautiful. I don't even know where to start. These are Panetta, and they have a left and a right. I actually wear these earrings with the, the Lent at the Ritz spider pin. It, they just go so well together. Um, look, look at that, or actually it would be this way. So, and these are rhodium plated, even though they're made in the 1980s, they just, they did rhodium plating. Look how amazing these are. Panetta, oh my God, if you haven't started looking for Panetta, start looking for Panetta, you will thank me. I know you will thank me. Look at that, with the baguettes and the kind of highway bridge. See, hold on. Look. Uh, so beautiful, you could die from it. So beautiful. And then the last ones are gold over sterling with the faux pearl drop. And these are pierced. And these are also signed. And I believe these are also dated. Look, look at that. Oh, actually, I should show you what the back looks like this way. There you go. Beautiful. Pearl is beautiful. We have these gorgeous things. Um, these were made by Signer, and they did these in kind of different families. They also had larger ones with that kind of geometric shaped crystals. Um, these are excellent to find if you find them. Look at the back. And look at the look at the way those crystals are. These look like fine jewelry, but like you don't know what kind of fine jewelry, like what on earth could it be? And you know, like what kind of stone is that kind of fine jewelry? Look, look at the cuts of those crystals. Exquisite high-end 1980s costume jewelry. Signer, Kenneth J. Lane, Christian Dior, Panetta, Butler and Wilson. Who else? Chanel. Oh, Swarovski Crystal, Oscar de la Renta, Michael Michaud, and Kenneth J. Lane, and Les Bernard. Thank you so much for watching. Click like, subscribe, ring the bell. And next week I'm doing Haskell. So excited. I've already started pulling it. The Haskell video is really coming. And those are pieces that came straight from the showroom that were not sold to the public. Well, not really the showroom from the collection of the family that were used in the Haskell book. So most of what I have is from that, a real treat to see, one of a kind, once in a lifetime. Make sure you have your notifications on for that. Thank you so much for watching. See you next week. I, I almost forgot the lipstick. Okay, so I want your opinion. Here it is, smoking on screen. This was sent to me. It says, I don't know, Belle and Argent, I tore cream here, just read it, I don't know. And then this is the thing. This is probably ridiculous, but look, see that? That's like an indicator of what's to come. This is why I want this lipstick to work. Look at this case. Look at it, it's like jewelry. It's so beautiful. I'm thinking if, if the lipstick doesn't work, I'm gonna take the lipstick out and use it, use this case as something else, like maybe, um, a needle holder or something, but look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Oh, I want it to work. Okay, so. Have I ever put on lipstick like this before? No, I haven't. Never used the camera monitor thingy. Never used the camera screen as, I've never used the camera screen as a mirror before. I've seen other people do it. Can't be that hard. Oh, it feels good. Hmm, it's more sheer than I expected it to be. Mm, I don't like it. 
Yep, red just isn't going to work. Here, let me check my phone. Okay, I'm going to try and put it on a little better. I don't know. Hmm. I don't know. I just think I just think I can't do it. I think I think I used to be able to do a red and if I was a little bit younger, then this red would probably be a really good red, but it's just I just don't know if I can do it anymore. Anyway, let me know what you think in the comments below. Thank you again for watching. Thank you for sticking with me through the lipstick test. See you next week.